I bet you're probably thinking that these two bottles are for Rosemary's kids. <laughs> no, they aren't. They're doing great. The bonding went just as planned. But this girl right here is the one who's needing a little bit of assistance. Not because she has rejected her kids, but because her teeth are too huge and they are too tiny to get their little mouths on them. So they were able to nurse a few sips from her in the beginning and then they just were having a hard time. She was standing so good, but they just couldn't get a good hold on her huge, huge teats. So luckily for me, Fancy has huge hand-sized teats which makes her very easy to milk with my carpal tunnel and chronic pain and inflammation. And she's very good on the milk stand. But for whatever reason, her kids were slightly smaller this year than usual, and their mouths are smaller because of it. And they've had a hard time fitting those big, big teats inside of their mouths. I've tried placing them into their mouths, and they suck a little bit, but they just don't stay with it. They fall off the teat easily. So we've had to supplement with bottles. She's being amazing mother. She's licking them, she's kissing them, she's calling to them, she's sleeping with them, she's cleaning their bums. She's doing everything a mom should. So I am leaving them with her in hopes that they will take to her teat eventually. We have been showing them the teat and putting it in their mouth before we give them the bottle and after we give them the bottle so that they know that that's the associated place where they're going to get their milk. But really, in all honesty, they're already in love with me and the bottle. Fancy is very easy to milk right into the bottle. She doesn't kick or jump or anything. So it's like super easy. So every time I come down here, I give her a good milking into the bottle. I actually don't have to put her on the milk stand. She will stand still in the stall while I'm giving the babies their bottles, so it makes it really easy. So I just milk right into the bottle so that it's the perfect temperature for the babies. And it saves me that extra step of work that sometimes bottle babies can be. It's still a lot of work. I think my hardest part is that I have to come running down here as soon as I wake up to make sure that they get their morning bottle after being all night without anything. And that just before I go to sleep, when I'm really sleepy, I have to run down here and give them a bottle. In the middle of the day, bottles don't bother me at all. It's uh, normal for me to make a couple of trips down to the barn during the day. But those morning and nighttime ones, oh, I could do without. But for the health of the babies, this is our best option. We are only giving them Mom's milk, they've had nothing but colostrum from the last couple of days from her. Hopefully we can continue in that fashion and we won't have to use any of the other does milk and Fancy will keep producing a good amount of milk. All right, here we go. You ready for your bottle? I need two hands to do this. Okay. Oh. oh no, I brought two bottles, but I can't use two bottles and hold the camera. So I'm going to have to stop here. But you get the idea. They're doing very good on the bottle. Fantasia's like, where's mine? I need two hands. Let's see if I can do two at a time. I've been using the same bottle, but as you see, they do want to rip it from each other's mouths. So, there we go. Two bottles. I can do this. Sure I can. <laughs> oh, I hope I don't have to do this for three months, though. I'm hoping that Mama gets softer in her teats and babies get bigger and stronger. Hey, listen, May May and April, you don't need bottles. Oh, Fancy, don't step on my camera. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to move the camera anyway. 
Rosemary is nursing them great. They're doing well. And daisies are nursing great as well. Fancy's doing well bonding with them. They just can't get a hold of the teats. Uh-oh, Ryan's in trouble. He apparently did not close the duck door when he was done feeding last night. I was kind of rushing him. It was my son's graduation. My big boy Dalton graduated high school last night. I wonder if they're actually gonna go in. That would be amazing. Nope, no, because the one lone silver apple yard drake knows not to go in so they're gonna follow him oh maybe i will get him in even if i do get the drake i don't want in there that's better than having ducks out and i did it i didn't even try you guys see that that was pretty amazing <laughs> well that was pretty lucky huh i guess i can text ryan and tell him he's no longer in trouble <laughs> So some of the goats are still happy to eat forage first. And then we have these fatties over here that are going after the hay first. Guys, come on. You're supposed to go and eat forage first. <laughs> We're giving the alfalfa orchard in the stall to the mama goats. And we're using the Bermuda out here and we are about to get some good orchard alfalfa real fresh so we're super excited about that and we're gonna get a whole trailer load of it not a big trailer we have a small little trailer so we're gonna get a whole bunch at once to reduce the price and i'm excited about that you know you're a homesteader when you get excited about excuse me you know you're at homesteader when you get excited about the price of hay being cheap. Oops, I forgot the gorilla cart in there. That means these kids are going to be playing on it all day, I bet. I think it can handle it. The kids love being out here. They seem to play on this incline a lot where all the bricks and old foundation from some long lost homestead, they seem to like bouncing around on those rocks and bricks. This one says, no mommy, I'm still thirsty. Give me more. Give me more. Everybody is doing really good. I may not have been able to get any help to get these beds prepared despite our call for help but at least I've got this so I got one bed here ready for peppers we've got about 60 tomato plants that Robert and I planted Robert from Daybird Aviaries they are growing already amazingly it's almost time to harvest the garlic. This is not normal harvesting time for garlic in Georgia, but due to the fact that we have had such extreme heat and we had such a warm, mild winter, the leaves are already dying back. So once the about bottom three leaves are all the way dead on the stem, I'll go ahead and pull them up. They're probably ready now, but I'm just gonna give it as much time as possible. It's supposed to be in the high 90s all week here in Georgia, so that's probably gonna do them in completely. Strawberries are still producing like gangbusters. Beautiful fresh fruit every day. 
and they are so delicious and sweet. The comfrey has been producing new leaves every time I harvest leaves off for the goats. It puts out 10 more, so that's really happy. The bees are loving the blossoms and we'll be able to have plenty to harvest for making fertilizer for our garden. Ryan and I filmed a clip the other day. I'm gonna put it right here and tell you how this bed got ready. I need your help, Ryan. I need you to get this bed ready for planting. All these weeds need to be gone. You think you could do that? And how do you propose I do that? Light them up. Light them up, up, up. With pleasure. I just want to say not everything works out the way you expect it to or the way that you want it to sometimes it doesn't even work out the way you need it to I needed this garden this year this was part of my healing but I'm gonna keep moving forward and I'm not gonna get discouraged I'm gonna be happy with what I got and I have a lot more than I realize at times when I think about all of the things that I planned on planting this year, all of the things that are too late to plant now, I get pretty discouraged. But then I, I just think about all of the things that I can still plant and the things that I do have in the ground and the abundance that is here already. And I just have to keep that in mind to help me get through the fact that I didn't get my kids' TP garden built. That's very disappointing because they really wanted it. They were really excited about it. But without help, I can't do this work. So moving soil by building into these beds is hard work on the back. There are very few people who are capable of doing that kind of work. And Apparently none of them live anywhere near me, so I'm on my own, and that's hard. Ryan's working overtime still, and that's been hard, but I'm just going to try to get these few tomato plants that I got in the ground to stay healthy and strong, enjoy my garlic and strawberries, and, you know, the broccoli we got planted too late, we'll just enjoy it as broccoli greens. I still can plant some squash, cucumbers, and beans all throughout the summer here in Georgia. So I'm looking forward to that at least. And the other things, well, they'll just have to wait for next year. And I am going to try to work on these gardens still. I'm going to try to get help still. Not that it will happen anytime soon. 
if at all. But if I can slowly, one bed at a time, get them ready, I have the potential of having an amazing fall garden. And I love my fall veggie crops. So I'm going to have to look forward to that. So thank you guys for your support. And those of you who did reach out to me and wanted to help but couldn't, I appreciate it. Just knowing that you wanted to help. 